रोड सेफ्टी वर्ल्ड सीरीज सीजन टू को पावर्ड बाय बेटीएम से यूपीआई डिजिटल स्पॉन्सर फेयर प्ले न्यूज खेल जा एंड म्यूचुअल फंड सही है It's match number four of the Road Safety World Series, and we've got for the first time in this competition New Zealand taking on South Africa. We've got the two captains with me, and the match referee G V Vishnanath. Who's got the coin? Ross Taylor's got the coin. Safety, Safety is the call, and it's a road first. Ross Taylor, you've won the toss. Come over here. What would you like to do, and why? Uh, we'll have a bet. Uh, every team who's batted over not, uh, at night has won the toss. Has batted first, so uh, yeah, we'll see what we'll see what we can do. And you're here, back playing in India. How does it feel? Yeah, I mean it was only a few, uh, probably seven or eight months ago we played a test match here, so wicket looks a little bit different to what we played on there. But um, no, a lot of the guys have just arrived in the country, uh, excited to be here and obviously represent our country as well. And for the first time, New Zealand is being seen in the road safety. What would be one of your messages for the Indian public around road safety? Well, I mean, first and foremost, it's a great initiative and it's great to be a part of. But um, yeah, I, I think just being positive and, and trying to spread that message uh, of road safety throughout the whole country. And um, you know, obviously, the games so far have been fantastic, and hopefully, we can do our part in, uh, in the games to come. And your makeup of the side? How many spinners? How many fast bowlers? Uh, we, we're just trying to get eleven on the park. Uh, <laughs> guys have just arrived uh, back and a little bit nervous, to be fair. But uh, you know, South Africa have had one game and uh, look like they're raring to go. So we'll see how we go on today. All right, all the best. Thank you, <laughs> Johnty. You're a bit surprised he only played here eight months ago. That's unfair. Exactly. I mean, the rest of us <laughs> eight years ago, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, um, your side. Uh, what um, what is your makeup of the side? Any changes? Yeah, we have one change. So Makai and Tini is sitting out, and Tandi Shabalala or Spinner is coming into the side. And reasons for that? A bit of rest, or maybe about the pitch? Probably a bit of both. You know, seeing as it's hard work for for guys who do come out of retirement not eight months ago, and and also just having seen how the wickets played, it does hold up. It's a little bit slow. The Indian bowlers bowl really well on it, very slowly. So hopefully we can do the same. South Africa legends haven't won a game yet throughout this tournament. What do you have to do to win? Well, we won one a really long time ago. It seems like in the last century. But I think we just got to do the basics really well, because a lot of us are kind of just remembering what we used to do, and we forget that that was in the heart of our careers. Go back to just doing the basics, which is a bit like road safety. Do the basics. Drive within the speed limit. Wear a helmet. So pretty much for my team, just do the basics well tonight. All right. Well, all the best. Thank you, Lisa. News from the middle is that New Zealand legends have won the toss and they've elected to bat. Looking at the pitch today, it looks as though it's going to be a slow scoring affair. 140, 150 may get to that total, the team batting first. I'm looking on a good length here. There's uh, plenty of dirt here and this is going to be good for the spinners. Limited grass, so I'm expecting a lot of turn and pace bowlers just utilising those cutters. But if we go down the centre of the pitch, now this is where Natini and Bond, when they're at their best, their peak, they'll be utilising their pace and hitting this length where there's a bit of grass there, it would skid on, hurry on to the batsman, but again there's patches there where the odd one will hold up so the batsman won't be comfortable playing the pull shot. But I don't think batsmen will be worried about that with those two particular bowlers today because they're a little bit older. But at the end of the day, it's looking like a good pitch, spin to win. Jacques Rudolph didn't retire too long ago. Aaron Redmond opening the batting for New Zealand. 42 years old. That's his T20 career. 70 innings. He's got 100 in the format. He's quite read 125. Not too bad at all to go with his 950s. He's alongside Anton Devcic. Left hand, right hand combo. Devcic. Likes to go after it. 146 games for him. He's a little younger. Strike rate 133, also has a ton. He could be a dangerous man today. Yeah, for them, it's a chance just to, to get out there whilst all your net sessions, you, you may feel good and you may be hitting the ball out of the middle. 
as soon as you come into a live game, field is in play and the juices start to flow a little bit more and your heartbeat starts to increase. Can you make the right decision? That's the question. Johan Boita will take the new ball. Didn't pick up a wicket in his first match and there was a couple that just stuck in his hand and went down the leg side. Very attacking bowler and will have an attacking field as well. Two fielders out are on the leg side. Right, we're all set then, pretty much. Those two fielders Lisa mentioned, long on and deep square leg. And the waiting is over. Here comes Johan Boerta. Reverse sweep straight away from Aaron Redmond. What a start. Yeah, he got his hands early in position, didn't he? It was there, and there's such a big gap. And because of that, John T. Rhodes is bringing another fielder across to the offside. Now there'll be five fielders on the offside. 45 inside the circle, so and mid-wicket. They're the only two fielders on the inside, in leg side. Oh! Oh, quick single take and misfield. Redmond wanted to get down the track there, so it's an aggressive start by him. Steyer is biting his nails. He was on the same flight as me on the way in today. So he hasn't had much time to prepare. There you see Redmond there just shimmying come down. Berta pushed that one through. Well, we needed to talk to him and tell him that Suleiman and Ben actually took the same flight as Aaron Holland, our host downstairs. And he played and he picked up wickets straight away. He literally came to the ground. The so Scott Styrus, a little bit lazy there. <laughs> oh, bowled him. Got it all wrong, Anton Devcic. First ball takes on Johan Berta. He misses. Berta hits. Well, one thing is evident. The New Zealanders are playing an attacking game. We saw that even with the first delivery with the reverse. This one out the front of the hand going straight on. A little bit too full to be playing that shot. And snuck under the bat. South Africa strike and the skipper is happy. Dev chip. He goes without scoring. It's one for one. The new batter for the New Zealand legend serving the four team Brownlee. Dean Brownie, the new batsman. He's in because Johan Berta has taken a wicket with the third ball of the match. Dean Brownlee has hit one test hundred and that came against South Africa. And he's away. Big man Garnet Kruger getting down, getting a hand on it, probably saving a run. And the reason why he's here is Devchik just trying to go big on the leg side. Sometimes, no doubt, these players will premeditate certain shots and the ball unfortunately isn't there. That's a good start by South Africa. Three for one. And 
New Zealand won the toss and decided to bat first here in Kanpur against the South Africa legends, but they've already lost an early wicket. Anton Devcic out first ball, trying to slog sweep Johan Berta, and now we've got a bit of pace. Garnet Kruger, 45 years old, 53 games, 48 wickets, average of 28. Oh, with decent pace in the first game, got a bit of a way swing as well to the right-handed batsman. And we've got a slip in place. He bowled well in the first match against India, but he was coming up against some serious players in Namanoja, Sachin Tendulkar, just to name the two openers. He didn't pick up a wicket, none for 53 off his four overs the first game. New Zealand will be all about trying to just get an understanding of the pitch. It's probably handy given that they're the newbies within the competition to kind of play last, get an understanding of what totals are, are good enough on this pitch here in Kampur. Yeah, yeah. That's clipped into the gap. That's going to be the first boundary of the game. Fine enough from Dean Brownlee to meet the man at the deep backward square leg boundary. The one thing that's been evident, players don't lose touch. When the ball is on their pads and there's a little bit of pace, they always get in good positions to be able to work it to the leg side. And you don't have to time the pants off the ball. Nicely clipped. That's into the gap as well. That's going to run away to the boundary too. Lovely shot off the back foot. This time through the offside by Dean Brownlee. He looks in good touch. It's simple movements, isn't it? It's not difficult. Very still at point of release and gets his head over the line of the ball. A little bit of transfer of weight. That's all punched nicely off the back foot. Fuller. And it was aerial slightly from Brownlee. One bounce in the end to Alvaro Peterson at a squarish cover. Beautiful sight, Green Park, isn't it? Right on the banks of the River Ganges. That's that last delivery. Might have been slightly worried at that point. Sure, and this is top edge, but there's no one out there. All the way. First maximum of this game between New Zealand and South Africa. 18 for one. Dramatic start to this game. 18 for one off two. Down the track and that's going to be caught straight to the man at mid-off who is Jack Rudolph, who takes it comfortably. I think the batsman was a little bit in two minds, Aaron Redman, whether to go up and over or keep it down. In the end, he did neither. It was almost like Redman thought, Hang on, I want to get into the action of what Brownlee did in the previous over. Here's our time to attack. He dances down. And he probably, the, the, the 
the fact that he advanced down, didn't give himself enough room to get up and under it. And that was the issue. Good catch there by Rudolph. Redmond goes for three, New Zealand 18 for two. The new butter for the New Zealand legends is the legendary captain, jersey number three, Ross Taylor. The New Zealand captain, Ross Taylor, strides to the crease. Just 38 years old, he should be fresh. What a record as well, 275 games, 32.50s, 100. He is going to be a key man for South Africa to dismiss today. New Zealand's all-time leading run scorer in all internationals. Tentative start there, isn't it? Just sizing up everything, just talking to his partner, Brownlow at the other end, saying, oh, it's scooting through a little bit off the surface. Oh, nice, Dad. Oh, and a good length there, isn't he, Johan Berti? He's just keeping Ross Taylor pinned to the crease. Just takes one of those to turn a bit and skid on, and he's going to be trapped right in front. Great start to this over. This time, Taylor gets away. Just a little bit fuller that time. Well, unfortunately for New Zealand, losing their second wicket within the power plate, trying to attack, trying to ensure that they can go over the inner circle. Redmond. Economical from Berta, 19 for two. Good start by South Africa. Having lost the toss, they'll be very ple pleased with these first three overs. Johan Berta has struck twice. Now we've got a change in bowling, though. Johan van der Vaart replaces Garnet Kruger. And he bowled pretty well in that game against India. Probably the pick of the bowlers for South Africa. Two for 38 he picked up. 44 years young. 108 wickets and 109 matches. Good economy. Just over seven and a half. Well, that's close, very close. Ooh. Umpire made his decision up very quickly there. Johan van der Vaart, I think, wants it reviewed. <laughs> well, I think he's very excited that he got a little bit of theme movement off the deck, cut back in. Ross Taylor was kind of shuffling out of the crease. Yeah, hit in line. I know he's batting out of the crease. I know the ball has to travel a little bit. Whew. 
whip. And Ross drags that rather ugly shot to mid-wicket. That was close. Maybe height, the only thing that could have saved Roscoe here. Oh, you're helping the umpire, aren't you? <laughs> I guess we're going to see. So, uh, yep. Yeah. Just above the knee roll, wasn't it? So maybe, maybe height. Just take a look at where he actually takes his guard. He's a good one and a bit steps, feet to outside as well, and he's on the move. He's not quite hitting the ball where he wants to at the moment, Ross. That was uh, a cue ender. Going leg side this time, and it goes offside. <laughs> at least he sees the funny side of it. <laughs> Well, good angle just to have a look at the fact that he wasn't able to get up and under the ball. Too close to the ball to be able to do that. Probably should have gone along the ground instead. Yeah, this pitch might not be coming on as well as the pitch yesterday. I've seen a couple of thick inside edges, missed time shots from the top order of New Zealand here. Not easy for them just to come in cold, having not played a game in this tournament and have to assess the pitch straight away. Having said that, they did win the toss and decide to bat, so it's their own choice. Changing the field, long on goes out, third man comes up. Bit of confusion as to who's supposed to be where. Team and out are going to be long on and deep square leg. Pace off, and that's going to be a single for Dean Brownlee. So four overs bowled, it is 21 for two. Jan Berta. Yeah, yeah. Two for five from his first 13 balls, doing a great job for John T. Rhodes here. One of those off spinners who's always loved bowling in the power play. He made it into an art, didn't he? He loved it. He's always thinking and talking about the game. I remember when he was playing for the Sydney Sixers, managed to be in the dugout at the same time. And all he kept doing whilst he was waiting to bat was talking to everyone. The, the field was set, what the bowlers were trying to do. He's done a bit of coaching, obviously, in CPL and around the world. I base himself out of Adelaide in Australia now. But good to see him back out there having a bowl. Yeah, he's a bit of an honorary Aussie, isn't he? Played a lot of cricket uh, in Australia as you said for the Sixers he was a fixture of the Sixers side for a while he actually captained South Australia as well so that's where he ended his career runs marathons just for fun like who would do that yeah he's clearly um Got a couple of screws loose if he's doing it for fun. <laughs> he looks a fit guy though, doesn't he? Here are the two wickets. Completely deceived Anton Devcic with the length there and the flight. Didn't want it that full. And again, Aaron Redmond in no position to play that shot. Good bit of bowling. Johan Berti, has got excellent control of his, his length and flight in general. Doesn't do anything too fancy. Down the track. Another one that skewed off the outside edge. Good bit of fielding.
of Shabalava out there doing the work. Came off the Q end of the bat, really. So just need to keep your head down a little bit more. But one thing's for sure, compared to the first game, Johan Bota has been excellent. That's close. Yeah, and given. Ross Taylor was finding it really hard to get going. Wasn't able to, to find the middle of the bat and probably tried to preempt that shot. And going across the line is always a risk. Yeah, Emma seeing the umpire. Bit of a let off maybe for Ross Taylor. The previous over, but this time the finger goes up. I think it would have been umpire's call on impact. Fair enough. Hitting the stumps as well. So Ross finding his feet today. Four off 11 is 26 for three. Twenty-six for three. We've got Aaron down. Who have you got for us, Aaron? I've got Scotty Starris. I know there's a little bit of chat happening upstairs before about why you weren't playing. Lisa thought it was a little bit soft, but to be fair, you were doing the Asia Cup last night. You've literally just arrived here. Well, welcome to the Road Safety World Series. First and foremost, how is the body feeling? When will we be seeing you? I was available for selection for tonight. I'm just going to say that, Lisa. Ross Taylor decided to leave me out. He said, I heard you've got a dodgy calf which is alive. Um, but, yeah, I can't wait. It's going to be great. It's good to see everybody, even the South African boys. Now, I played a season over there uh, in their T20 comp, so a lot of those guys were teammates. So that's what this tournament's about, getting back out there and playing some cricket, which is great, but also to see the guys that you used to play in a competitive uh, environment against and then, of course, in a shared dressing room with too. Here's the thing, because your athletes at the very top of your game, you're legends of the game, surely the competitive juices are going to flow like you're going to want to push yourself like there's a bit on the line isn't there it's a good it's good fun but it's a little bit serious oh it's very serious yeah the guys are just uh, determined to have some fun you're right but when you get out in the middle you want to do well you want to uh, enjoy the fact that you haven't played cricket for years and years and that's the thing you know we all did this for a living we all uh, did this because we enjoyed it and loved it so the, the purpose of this is to get back out and recreate that and uh, and I would like to think that that's going to be the case for all the teams not just us and let's talk about the other fact that we're here. It is the Road Safety World Series. It's a very important cause in New Zealand and Australia. We take road safety very seriously. And I guess what's your message to everyone back in India about just how important it is to make sure that we're staying safe on our roads? Well, the, the, the fact of the matter is you can only, you can only take one mistake and you could be gone. And that's, that's all it is. So you might think it's not going to happen to me. It'll be someone else or, you know, or I'm a very careful driver. But then you can't trust what another person's doing either. So uh, I think the road safety message is incredible incredibly serious. You're right, in Australia and New Zealand we have way too many deaths from this. Uh, so I'd love to see something like this in, in our countries as well for that very reason. So I applaud um, whoever's putting this on here in the state uh, because it is such a, a great cause. Just on a lighter note to end as well, anyone you're looking forward to facing? Have you had a little look at the teams? Anyone that you've got a, an old vendetta against maybe that you want to square up against? There's two actually. One, Brettley because we've worked so much with Brett over the last little while. So there's some, there, I'm going to smash him. It's that simple, right? Two, Brad Hogg. You know, he retired after me. I don't understand. I'm copping grief up there, but why is he not playing? That's the thing. He retired after I did. You know, so he's the one who should be out here playing rather than sitting out there in the AC and, and, and enjoying his cricket. Get back out here, Brad. Well, Brad's up in the commentary box. I'm looking forward to hearing what he has to say, but we're going to get back upstairs to them. Scotty, thanks for your time, and you know, look after that calf, and we'll see you soon. <laughs> Well, last ball of the year, and that's why I've picked up the mic. I want Brad to have a proper long reply to Scotty Styrus next over. It's only got to be short and sweet. 
just wanted him to have a chance of actually scoring a run against Australia. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Scotty's, Scotty's going to be listening to this. Yeah, but that's another ripper from Brad. A fantastic competitor, Scott Storris. Really enjoyed playing against him. And looking forward to seeing what he's got here as well. Good all rounder. New Zealand are always competitive, especially when they came across the ditch. That's the sea between Australia and New Zealand. And they always challenge us. And that's 34 for three after six. And you've got to say, both has been excellent. Three for nine in three overs. And that's why there's a little bit of a mid-pitch conference, Brad, just to decide whether he gets the fourth or just maybe hold him back a little bit. I think they're going with him for the fourth over. Just trying to get South Africa off to a good start because they got beaten quite convincingly against India the other night and they want to get back into this contest. So while they've got New Zealand on the back foot, they might as well go hard right now and keep their main strike by Lobota going. Yeah. You have to be right, they got they got beaten in that first first game. But they've come back strongly so far in, in the second game against New Zealand. Oh, a few good shots from the New Zealand players. But it's been all Johan Gotha and South Africa. He's picked up three wickets, including the big one of, of Taylor, the captain. Oh, again, excellent delivery. Oh, he's bowled him. Oh, just for a minute, I thought the keeper had missed and gone for four bites, but but it's ricocheted off the stumps. Beautiful delivery. I'm not sure if the batsman's are standing around. See if the keeper actually knocked the bail, bail off or it was the ball. We'll have a look right now. have a closer look at that it doesn't seem like an inside edge just hit the off stump very unlucky there room has to go for one new zealand in a lot of trouble 35 for four Jacob Rum, the new man in. Has coached the New Zealand women's team. Have a look at his T20 career. Best of 66, a strike rate of 126. Well, he used to extract a bit of bounce when he used to bowl. Not sure he's going to get too much bounce on this pitch, though, Brad. Oh! Watching him warm up, he's still got a little bit of pace as well. And there was bounce there on the warm-up pitches. The broom just going right back and I'm not certain that he hit the stumps. Thought he uh, got away with something there, but it's just clipped. A coat of varnish. Seen that happen a lot and the bale stays up. Just a chip from Jacob Oram, but that's 36 for four. Henry David's coming on. Right arm medium, but he's short the run up here and it's going to be right arm off spin. 
and Horam the big heave ho and it didn't go yeah, I'm a little surprised that they don't have a slip in place you've got the opposition on the mat at the moment 37 to 4 could be a little bit more aggressive in your field settings put a little bit more pressure on the on the New Zealand batters Jacob Orum though has moved on to two of five. You've got to say though he's not looked that convincing because both his runs have come through miscued shots, but he's got the ability to hit the big ones. We've seen that in the past. Such a powerful striker of the ball. And New Zealand will be hoping that he finds a bit of form and is able to dispatch a few. It just shows that the pitch is a little bit slow when you're bowling spin. It's just holding up and the batsmen just haven't been able to adapt apart from Brownlee. And Brownlee, those who follow the test game back in 12-13. He made one of the most courageous hundreds that a New Zealand's probably ever seen. That was in Cape Town against South Africa. Second innings, 109. He'd been out of the test team for a couple of months. But uh, they... Got bowled out for 47 in the first innings. For Lander getting five for seven in that particular innings, or seven for five, sorry. And then uh, in the second innings, he courageous 109, nearly making South Africa bat again. The New Zealanders will remember that fine innings of, of Brownlee's. But you said nearly making South Africa bad again. And again, in, in the game of cricket, those little victories sometimes that you look for, even though you may have lost the test match, but you're looking for little victories. Uh, that's struck over mid-wicket. Won't get to the fence. But sometimes when you've lost heavily, you're looking for those, those little pick-me-ups. And that would have been a pick-me-up, getting South Africa to bat again. It's a bit like the game last night. Sri Lanka got over 200 runs, but Australia were in the hunt right up until the 16th over where they lost a couple of wickets and in the tail, not recognised batsman, uh, just couldn't help out Reid and uh, to get him to get those final runs. And in itself, that's a small victory for staying in the game till the 16th over. 41 for four, New Zealand. Changing the bowling, the new bowlers, Andy Shabalala. Ada was done, 44 on the board. Brownlee's looked good for his 29. Shabalala, excellent average and excellent strike rate as well. Average of 19, strike rate of 17. And yeah, what's Jacob Oram going to do? going to try and take Shabalala on. Well, not yet. But again, as you said, Brad, this pitch is just holding up a little bit for the spinners. And that's Oram at his best. And good bit of fielding out in the deep as well. Just not getting the timing that he wants because the ball's holding up. And that's Lloyd Norris Jones, international hockey player for South Africa. Played a lot of hockey in the European leagues and did spend a bit of time in Australia in WA, where the hockey stadium there at Curtin University, uh, where he learned his craft. 
I think he's done quite well over there. Well, he's in the air when he's flicked it back, so I think he's done really well over there. Played a lot of school cricket as well in South Africa. Did you did you play any other sports as a as a kid other than cricket? Uh, played a lot of hockey and um, a little bit of Aussie rules football as well. Growing up in a country town, you had to play in the uh, in the footy team. I really enjoyed that, but uh, enjoyed the hockey. The reason why playing hockey is that hand-eye coordination, and it was going to help the cricket as well. And hasn't got enough of that. Brownlee is very lucky. Now Vera Peterson has spilt the beans and given Brownlee a life. But should have been taken. He got himself into a good position. Got his hands underneath it. Just couldn't hold on to it. Yeah, just again, just got himself in the right position, but just went through his hands. Oh, that's well bowled. That's clever bowling. Saw Jacob Oram dancing down the track and just slid it down to the next side. Excellent bowling and excellent glove work behind the stumps. Well, there's rain around. If rain doesn't get us. Well, it doesn't get New Zealand, it will be the wickets. Charging. Chabalala just saw Jacob Oram coming down the wicket and adjusted appropriately. Oram out for six, 45 for five. But 45 for 5, Nina was gone. And as the umpire touches the watch, his watch, you know it's time for a Sea Tires strategic timeout. I need to put the brakes on there, Rowan. Need to really wear the rubber off the tyre. Jumping out of that brake. Yeah, let's get on to Erin. I think she's got Makaya and Tinny for, with us. Oh, I certainly do. What an absolute character. We were just having a good little dance on the sidelines. And why not? South Africa off to a very good start. Telling you, uh, your on border has been doing very well. Four wickets, you know, in the first four overs of his spell, which is very good. South Africa uh, doing good. So obviously, you were thinking, well, they don't need me today. I'm just going to sit this one out. Obviously, spin's doing well. But how's the body? Are we feeling OK? No, the body's strong. Don't worry about it. You know, when they say that uh, the wicket is going to lick a bit slower, we need more spinners. As the guys are putting my hand up, I want to sit out because we have a lot of guys that can bowl spin. So we don't need to have a lot of pace. You certainly chose the right thing today because it looks like spin is king on this particular wicket. But did go down to India in the first match. What was the feeling in the team? Were we stressed? Was John T a bit cranky? What was it like? <laughs> we know John T is always cranky. Is that that's why we call him a jumping John T. You know, he's always uh, want to see things going very well. Even for us, we we had a jet lag. You know, everyone because we landed and then we practiced once and then we played the following day. It was not a very good preparation for us. But now today, as you can see, that the boys are up for it. They want to make sure that they do things in the right way. Certainly going very well at the moment at 45 for five. Cannot complain, but you know, you played World Safety Road Series last year. So, you know, talk to me about why it was so important for you to come back again this year. Yeah, I think the good thing about the, the, the way that they actually, you know, take care of us has been wonderful, you know, having to see the people that they own, you know, the franchises, you know, being friendly to us and being able to communicate with us. And I think the road safety on its own is a very good initiative. We all know that there's a lot of accidents happening on the road, that a lot of uh, people dies on the road by us, you know, coming in and try and make sure that we, to send that awareness to people of, 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 uh, of the country, not only for India, all around the world, you know, road accidents, you know, there's something that we don't want them to happen because when you leave home, going to work, driving in a car, we're expecting you to come back. Beautiful words. Couldn't say it better myself. Thank you so much for your time. We look forward to seeing you next game and good luck. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Makaya. White ball. Yeah, it's a white, so 
He's going to have to bowl that one again. Yeah, what, what did New Zealand do here? And we, we spoke about this yesterday. I know it's the last ball. Do they try and get to 130? Do they try and just nudge it around and get to 100? They just try and get 120 oh. something to bowl out. You don't want to be less than 100. Anything's defendable on this wicket. 49 for 5 after 10. Javalava to continue. Oh. One thing is evident that the decision from John T. Rhodes to increase the number of spinners in their side is, is certainly making it difficult for New Zealand. They're in a bit of trouble, 50 for five. Yeah, they look like uh, side they're just playing their first game, don't they? Just getting used to conditions as you'd expect. Dean Brownlee seems to be the big hope at the moment. 33 of 29 balls, but a couple of big hits from Macca. Craig McMillan might help. Having said that, he hasn't played since 2010. He managed to actually uh, do a little bit of commentary with Craig McMillan during the, the women's T, the women's World Cup in New Zealand, and he was saying he's enjoying the commentary. And then when I saw him out there before the toss, we had a good little chuckle and he goes, what am I doing? <laughs> I said, come on, show us what you've got. Here's your chance. Best of 65. Look at that strike rate. Pretty impressive, 148. Oh! I don't know about that shot, though. You might need to put that one away, but he gets a run. That's not your shot, Craig, is it? Come on. We all remember you just standing at the crease and biffing it. Straight over cover over the bowler's head. Didn't see this too often in his career, did we? Not known for his deft touch, is known for his power. The fielding, Shabalaba. Two runs off that over, 51 for five. Last 36 deliveries, it's been a little bit hard going for the New Zealanders. Eddie Lee to continue. And unfortunately for South Africa, strays on the legs and nicely put away. Yeah, rare bad ball from a South African spinner today. Just got his line wrong there, Eddie Lee. And Craig McMillan didn't try to overhit, did he? Just made sure he got it up and over the man at short fine leg. Big gap there. And that was always going to run away for four. So his first boundary in a significant game since 2010. Oh, dropped. The life for Craig McMillan. That previous delivery, boundary for the first time in 34 deliveries. So New Zealanders would have been happy. And they're happy with this extra life as well. Now, does it carry? I think it just gets to him. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Just a little slow to get down. Eddie Lee, those limbs probably still sore from the other day. Oh, I'd say not. Maybe that there was uh, maybe a little bit of bad. Pat. 
bat, should I say, <laughs> and also way outside the line of off stump. But Dean Brownlee just starting to go through his gears at the moment, trying to see if he can create, manufacture a shot and find another boundary for the New Zealand legends. Spin's been really hard to get away on this pitch, hasn't it? Doesn't look uh, like it's playing anything like the pitch yesterday in that game between the Sri Lanka legends and the Australia legends. Sri Lanka scored well over 200, lost just one wicket. Australia weren't too far off. This time he goes up and over the offside, but it's hanging in the air and put down. Kruger out there in the deep. He had plenty of time to run around. Maybe too much time in that sense. Well, he did the hard work going at Kruger. He got round to the ball. Maybe he didn't quite set himself. You can see there he, he was still on the move, wasn't he? Can't imagine. He was particularly happy when that ball went up. And I think a lot of these guys, particularly the bowlers, be very happy the ball doesn't come to them in this road safety world series. Over bowled, 57 for five. Well, 57 for five. A little partnership building, 12 off 19. Chabalaba getting the ball to turn. One thing I've noticed about these players, and we saw Brett Lee and Irfan Patan, their ability to get the seam position perfectly and get the ball to swing away or swing in. And the same thing with Chabalaba. Where he releases it, the seam is excellent. Gone, all oh, down. Oh no, taken. Eddie Lee, there's a little bit of juggling act. And it looks like he's hurt himself. But more importantly, he's taken the wicket and the pain will go away. Well, he says he's taken it. He looks pretty confident. Almost looked like he dropped it, caught it, dropped it, and then caught it again. Let's have a look, shall we, at the replay. Eddie Lee knows that, doesn't he? You know if you're the fielder whether you've taken that or not. Just check the no ball first, just to make sure that's all in order. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Again, <laughs> Craig McMillan going for a shot. He's not known for. Reverse paddle. Oh, there you go. Oh, drop, drop in, straight in. Left hand, no problems with that whatsoever, Eddie Lee. I thought it, uh, it bobbled around a bit more than that, but in the end, it was just straight in the left hand. So New Zealand continue to subside here. 58 for six, Craig McMillan's gone for seven. Gareth Hopkins. Oh, well bowled. New Zealand wicketkeeper batsman. Probably the 
last recognised batter within this New Zealand lineup. 71 was his best. Getting some nice drop. Nice drift as well. And I say that that actually hit him outside the line of off stump. Yeah, he's won really well on Shabalala, isn't he? Do you say there, lovely seam position outside the line, but quite a bit of turn. Might have even turned too much. Really did grip. <laughs> he's waving to someone. Hello. <laughs> So I've got, got a family member in the stand. Oh, oh and yeah, has the variation as well, just to, to get that one to go through straight as well. Yeah, premeditated shot, wasn't in the right position. And like you said, Matt, isn't known for that type of shot. Oh, now it turns big. There's the short leg that would have popped up nicely. Over bold, 60 for six. End of the 13th over, the New Zealand Legends are 16 for six. Eddie Lee to continue. I'm not sure what Conti Rhodes was doing. I think it was Conti Rhodes in that cover position, always throwing himself around. Projected score at the current run rate of 4.62. That's 92 runs. They'd like to get that up over six, potentially eight. 116 might help. Oh, good to see they're attacking with a slip in place. Oh, Googly from Eddie Lee hasn't bowled too many of those so far. Bowling a little bit quicker, isn't he, than Shabalala? Maybe the way to go on this pitch is just pace off. You get a bit more bite. Lee into his third over. Van der Vaart, by the way, has gone off the pitch. Looks like he might have a hamstring or a calf issue, so the other bowlers will have to bowl a few more. But uh, it's going to be a single. So just finding it hard to find the boundary at the moment, New Zealand. This is Craig McMillan. <laughs> That's not the position you really want to get into to play that shot. A little bit of juggling goes into the left hand. Yeah. He got up quite gingerly, didn't he, after taking that catch? But good to see that he's getting through the crease nicely now with the ball in hand. New Zealand legends having a little bit of fun. Got Cyrus there. Not sure about that hairdo. <laughs> what do you call that haircut? Good old mullet. Something that was very fashionable within the Australian men's team for a while. Oh! Nicely bold. One of those haircuts you have if you go to the hospital and you're having surgery and they shave off the side of your head. Thank you. say that the one has got you you've fallen down and <laughs> accidentally taken half your hair off but he's having a good time i can't wait to see him out there we'll have to wait till the second game he sneaked through a single just the four singles off that over 64 for six and on the 14th, one six in his innings and striking it just over 100. fifth spin up peterson Given the fact that all six wickets have fallen to a spinner, why not? Yeah, not renowned for his off-break bowling, Alviro, but he has bowled a little bit. Nine wickets in 133 games. Oh! It is turning, isn't it? For a part-time off-spinner, if you're starting to get the ball deviating that Ready? much going to be a handful and that's why if Brad Hogg mentioned that spin would play an important role and maybe a score of 130-140 oh. might be quite difficult to chase. Yeah, we just look at the scorecard and you can see how difficult it is. The second top score after Dean Brownlee is seven. 
Craig McMillan. So he's the only batsman who's got to grips with it at all. And even he's found it very hard at times because of the low bounce and the spin. And to kind of put this in perspective, a, a pitch that hasn't got that pace and, um, and zip means that actually your footwork and your placement and, and your timing of your hands and everything needs to be spot on. And that's a huge ask for guys that haven't been playing a lot of cricket. <laughs> so making their job even harder. Thank you. If they can keep milking these singles, they may be able to have a bit of fireworks later. Five runs off it, 69 for six. No shopping, no shopping. Eddie Lee to continue. Oh! He'll be happy with his performance tonight. Better line and lengths than the other night against India. Talking to the New Zealanders before they started this game and the South Africans the other night. Both teams were very nervous, not knowing what to expect. And uh, now that South Africa have been under a little bit of fire early on in this tournament. They've found their straps and uh, look as though they're going to have a victory tonight. It's not over yet, but... Oh! Yeah, I think the key word there was nervous because you're absolutely right. Just speaking to some of the, the players out there, just seemed a tad bit nervous in terms of how they're going to go about it, how's it, how's it going to be on the body. And with South Africa, having played that one game under the belt with a little bit more confidence, you can see that they've... They've performed really well today so far. I think it's good too here in India. At least the quick bowlers can have a little bit more of a rest and you rely more on the spinners. It's quite difficult when you haven't bowled for a long period of time, a couple of years, and then you come in and play a tournament like this and you want to put in that extra effort because the batsmen are finding it a little easier than the fast bowlers and that's where injuries start to occur. Well, also the fact that no matter how much you practice match intensity, when you get on the park for a, on match day, it's completely different. Awesome. Polite inquiry there. Empire says not Thank out. You. But again, a little bit of turn. He's again hitting the right areas. Eddie Lee He's got his action right tonight. He's got those lengths. He's a little full the other night against India and he paid the price, but now he's got it on that right length. And that could be close. The foot was up in the air. Hopkins might be in a little bit of trouble here. This is going to be a close call. When were the bales whipped off? Because right there, the foot in the air. For New Zealand's sake and the game's sake, I hope the third umpire does not give that out. <laughs> but I think he might be in a little bit of trouble here. Yeah, I'm with you. I think he's in a little bit of trouble over here. See, puts in the air. I 
I think we might be lucky because we can't get another angle to see if that puts in the air. As he's planning it with that close in vision with his foot going back. But that's a better a view of it. And to me, the lime green looks as though it hasn't touched the brown surface as that bale's coming off. Well, if it was me, that's out, but I'd be a batsman's nightmare, though, because I think most most decisions are out. The longer it goes on, the longer there's plenty of doubt with the third umpire, so you've got to give the batsman the benefit of the doubt here. This is patience. This is what you need when you're driving around the country. Patience. And then finally, you'll get the decision that you require, and that's walking through your front door and seeing your family when you get home. Yeah, my initial reaction was that he was in a bit of trouble, but obviously the third umpire, who's better suited for the job, said he wasn't. Now, if you just look at Eddie Lear there, he's got something on his arm, just some strapping on the arm. The reason why he's got that strapping is just try and prevent the sweat rolling down into his fingers. He was having trouble the other night because of that. It seems that the method has rectified the situation for him and he's getting better grip on the ball. 72 for six. Yeah, it's been a good 16 overs for South Africa. Well, it's time for a break. It's time for the Seat Tires strategic timeout. Let's focus on what we can do. Yeah, let's go back down to Erin. Well, it takes an army to put on the Road Safety World Series, and we have big thanks to our team owners who've gotten behind this very worthy cause. Now, a very happy owner of Team South Africa Legends is Mr. Grunty Sandbug. Sir, you must be very happy with how this game's going at the moment. Yeah, I'm very happy, very happy, and I would like to congratulate the team management for organizing such an amazing event with a wonderful cause. This is really great initiative taken by them, and I'm really happy and proud to be part of this league. And what made you want to throw your support behind this really worthy cause? See, this is an important cause. I'm like, you see, there's a saying like, if you if something happens to somebody in the family, it's just not the one person has been affected. It's the whole family is affected. So there's a saying like people say, instead of going 20 years early, go 20 minutes late, late. have patience. So be a responsible citizen. It's like, you have to be. A very, very true true words spoken. It's a very worthy and important cause. But, you know, you're with South Africa Legends, some amazing players in your team. But who stands out for you? Who did you love watching when you were growing up? Man, there's John T. I don't think so. Only me, the whole of India must have followed him. We used to always, whenever in our like gully cricket or the small cricket which we used to play, we used to say anybody who's doing a good fielding, we used to call him John T. We used to call him John T. And again, Makai and Nitin Yams, like the bowling used to do, he was a treat to watch, man. Though he was on the other side of India, but it was a treat to watch him. Thank you so much for your support in this incredibly worthy cause and good luck for the rest of the competition. Point up just before we went down Aaron Holland and sometimes you look at those bad performances or you have a bad day and you really analyse the game rather than just sitting back and going, right, did I go through my processes right? Uh, was I making the correct decision and I just had a bad day? Uh, the ball did something that uh, was in the bowler's favour. But then there's days where you have a good day or the result comes out, like you might get five for 20, but you've done a lot of mistakes in that and you don't analyse it because of the performance. Then the next couple of games, 
you fall away because you didn't analyse those particular uh, situations. And it's happened plenty of time to a number of players throughout my time and happened to myself a lot as well. Yeah, you spot on. I've, I've always believed that when you've had a bad day, you've got to try and look at the positives. And if you've had a good day, try and see where you can improve. What if, where was what were the things that you, yet you, that you didn't do as well as you should have? Obviously, you've done a lot of things right if, you, if you've got runs or wickets. What are the little things that maybe you could have, could have improved on? And if you've had a bad day, forget about it. Because, you know, everyone can have a bad day. Don't dwell on it too much. I think sometimes you get a little confident. I remember Steve Smith making big runs over there in the ashes in double hundred. And just out the back end, he was just playing with flamboyance. The footwork was getting more exaggerated. He was going right across off stump. Then the next game, he didn't go back to the formula at the start of the innings. And he got two low scores. And then he had to wait to the next test match. Uh, where he analysed it and thought, right, I got ahead of myself there. I've got to go back to basics. So sometimes you've just got to look at the situation when you finish off an innings. And that's a good shot. But uh, irons the fielder out in the deep. So you've just got to make sure when you finish an innings and you've made a big score, the next uh, game you're starting on a duck. Yeah, I was just going to say that. The next next thing is starting on zero. You've got to start from scratch all over again. Go through the right processes all over again. That's a cracking shot. That's found the gap and it's found the fence. Excellent shot from Brownlee. Good way to end the 18. It's 85 for six. Yeah, 18 over is gone. 85 for six. Shavalala in his fourth over. Oh, good delivery. And I, I want to ask you a question, Brad. And, and have a look at this boundary, though. It's it's been no, it's the last ball of the boundary. Oh, a bit of turn there. Yeah, this was the four of the last over smashed away on the offside. And I wanted to ask you this, you know, back back in the day, your gun fielder was at point. Now your gun fielders are boundary riders. And as a bowler, would you rather have that gun fielder at point now, cutting off the angles and maybe stopping the ball from going to the boundary? Or would you rather have your fielder, your best fielders patrolling the fence? Uh, it depends what state of the game is, but generally when I'm first starting a spell, especially in T20 cricket. And finds the man out in the deep. Brownlee looking for the boundary. It's slow. And the only option for him to really get any power on the shot is to go for that square boundary. And just didn't get enough of it. Yeah, just, just found the fielder in the deep. Didn't quite get the timing right. Yeah, got one to save two. Shabalala picks up his third wicket. Oh, he's been excellent as well. Brownlee, who's really good, goes for 48. New Zealand struggling at 86 for seven.
86 for seven. Travalala has got two deliveries left. Can he pick up the Pfeiffer? He's picked up three already. Now the Pfeiffer's out of the question. Can he pick up four? They're caught in the deep. Well, look, you know, I know a lot of people say a T20 cricket is, is a batsman's game, but I actually think it's, it's a bowler's game. I actually think your, your, your best chance of picking up a hat-trick is in T20 cricket. And that's something that's going to last with you for, for a lifetime. You've picked up a hat-trick. End of the 19th, one over left. It's 87 for seven. Yeah, 87 for seven. You were just talking about that fielding where you'd have your gun feeders before in, in the previous over. Yeah, if I'm bowling to a, a right-hander where I'm turning the ball back in, I want a mid-wicket in the ring and my cover on the ones and just try and build up pressure and get the batsman to hit the, those two and just get a couple of dots, maybe the odd one just going past them. And after a couple of overs, ah! I think that's going down leg side. After a couple of overs, once I've built up that pressure, I'll push my mid-wicket out to deep mid-wicket and uh, have my best fielder there. So my two best fielders are cover, short cover, and short mid-wicket. That's a beautiful shot straight down the ground. A much-needed boundary. Again, good use of the feet over there. Dancing down the track. Yeah, like you said, much needed boundary. Yeah, so best fielders, start a spell, cover, short me wicket. Then short me wicket or cover, whoever's the better fielder out that goes out to deep me wicket because that's where I want the man to cut the twos into ones. Yeah, again, just making sure you've got enough elevation over there. Again, just getting the elevation absolutely spot on. Picks up a, picks up a couple. As he, as he made it, I think he's made it. But they've got to go up to the third umpire. Comedy the errors there. Martin just getting the bat caught. <laughs> Wasn't able to slide the bat and finds himself in a lot of trouble. And that's good work from the keeper. So Martin goes, the comedy Vieira is there, running between the wickets. He's out with not facing a ball, and that's 92 for eight. Two deliveries remaining in this innings, 92 on the board. That's heaved away, won't get to the fence. Just to finish that fielding question, now you spoke about your gun fielders on the fence towards the end. Now. If you had to pick a gun fielder with a strong arm or, or a quick gun fielder, who would you pick? Ideally both, but if you had to pick one. No one in the ring on the leg side. Deep mid wickets, the quick man, deep mid on, and deep square leg gun field, the gun throws. And that's a big six to finish off the innings. And New Zealand don't quite get to 100, but they've made South Africa chase or have to chase down 100 with that big Dorothy then. Yeah, good shot to end the innings. And like you said, haven't got to 100, but they'll just feel a little bit better in the dressing room with that with that finish to the innings. Hopkins with 18 of 26, found a bit of rhythm towards the end. But you, you, you've got to say, I mean, the New Zealand innings has been as fluent as my Mandarin. Just didn't get any sort of fluency going. John T. Rhodes, the captain, 
will be really happy with the effort of his team. Yeah, Classy absolutely was. Uh, three for nine off your four overs today. You bowled absolutely beautifully. Tell me, what was working for you on that wicket tonight? Um, obviously, the conditions are suitable to spin bowling. Um, so it, it was just a matter of uh, finding the right length um, and the right pace on that wicket. I think overall, all the spinners bowled well on that wicket. But it's a difficult wicket to bet on, so we still have to bet well. Um, against what they're going to uh, uh, give back at us. So you went down to India in the first match. I guess, what did Captain John T. Rose have to say to you boys if we went out for tonight's match? Um, nothing too serious. Um, obviously, um, the guys were still a bit rusty. We just landed a day or two before that game, so um, the boys were still getting out the stiffness and stuff like that. So, um, look, the guys have been professionals. They know how to bounce back. They know how to assess the conditions, and that's exactly what we did today. And as you mentioned, spin was king on this particular wicket today. You and Johan Bolter pretty much took out the entirety of the wickets. What kind of information you'll be feeding back to your batters about the wicket? Um, I think it's a weekend where you've got to look to um, um, rotate the strike quite a bit, uh, look for ones and twos. I don't think it's a wicket where you, you, you can completely just go, uh, um, go um, too hard. So I think it's, it's, it's going to require intelligent batting. Um, one or two partnerships will definitely get us there. And that's what we're hoping for. Appreciate the insight. Congratulations. You rolled absolutely beautifully tonight. We'll see you in the next innings. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us.